These are really great coaches. Patterns are catering for a whole host of different railway companies. These are definitely a product worth buying. A big hello to you. Welcome back to the channel. It's so great to see you. I hope I find you well. I'm Jennifer Kirk, welcoming you up here to the loft on Weir Yard. And today we're taking a look at the all new range of Genesis coaches that have recently been released from Hattons. We've been really eagerly and excitedly waiting for these and we were very, very lucky on this channel to get the opportunity to have a look at uh, some of the pre-production models and the livery samples as well. So today I've uh, very, very kindly been loaned a set of the Genesis coaches by Hattons and I've actually bought one as well myself. Uh, really, really excited by these. But let's take a look and see if they really do live up to expectations. Come with me in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from Rails of Sheffield. Sell to the name you know and trust. Buy, sell or exchange any age or any gauge. Call them now for the very best price. Check them out today at the link below. But I've been really excited by these models. Certainly we've been waiting for them for a long time. They've been delayed because of COVID, but they have finally arrived. And I've just been looking forward to this actually for a couple of years now. And so uh, come with me and let's take a good close look. Now you might remember on this channel we had a first look at the original pre-productions in that kind of grey plastic of the Genesis coaches and we had the opportunity to put them through their paces and then later on when the livery samples arrived we also got to put them through their paces here on Weir Yard and I'm really pleased to report that finally after quite a long time of waiting and there have been delays because of Covid we finally got the production models and these have been very kindly sent over for review by Hattons and what they've actually sent us is one of the four packs so they're just a little bit too big in this outer carton to show you them all on the uh, screen at once but this is pack 301L so these are with the working lighting and all of the different coaches are being offered both in lit and unlit and we're going to go into that in the course of the review but this is the London and North Western Railway four pack each of the boxes is denoted by uh, letters A through to D I have actually mixed these up a little bit so I did have a quick look at them but essentially these uh, bulk packs of four is a really great way of just getting an instant train you can buy all the coaches separately but by buying these four packs, it does represent a small cost saving and it means that you just get the types of coaches that you need for a train. They've also very, very kindly sent over uh, one of the single coaches and this is the uh, H460 501BL and this is in the LMS Crimson Lake. Again, with working lighting, there are unlit versions available and this is the livery that we highlighted with the livery samples that I said at the time was the sleeper hit of the range and it'll be really nice to see how these have uh, actually appeared on the production models because the livery prototypes were exquisite um, but I'm going to leave that one to last and instead I'm going to uh, look to just slide these out of the outer carton which is really just a handy way of keeping the four coaches together. We've got uh, what looks to be a six wheel coach. It doesn't actually tell you on each of the boxes which one of the four types they are. Uh, but uh, we've got there, that's a six wheel brake third, I suspect. And then we've got the four wheel uh, coaches there. So that's the four wheel brake first third. So that's a brake composite and 
then the final coach is an all third four wheeler so we've got the mix of the four and the six wheel coaches and when we were looking through certainly the livery samples i was really really impressed uh, by the different versions particularly the six wheel ones now let's just retrieve that so we've got a set of footboards here um well, actually that's i think that's a footboard so we've got a single one there I'm just looking to see, uh, I don't know if there should be two or, no, oh, ah, I see. So quite handily, just in case um, you have any issues, I think, is that, or, no, I see. So that's actually two sets of footboards there. And these are full length. And the reason for these is because the actual model there comes with just showing you a, a gap and this is to allow full sideways movement of this uh, intricate and quite innovative sliding center axle and this is so that the coach can get round really really tight curves so if you're not going to run these on train set curves you can replace the footboards with these full length ones and that just removes that gap. So actually that is a really nice uh, touch, a nice innovation that caters both for the uh, people who perhaps have slightly tighter layouts and also for those who want to run these without that little gap. So it, it's catering for all markets and that is actually a really nice touch. We've also, because these are lighted, we've got the DCC fitting guide for these and it just tells you how to remove the roof. We've got eight little tabs and uh, it's just simply a case of lifting up the roof um, and just a little warning, pipe running down one end is not glued and will release from the collar as you remove the roof. So we've just got to watch out for some of the uh, piping and then inside underneath the, uh, the inner piece, We've got to unscrew that. We've got a Next18 decoder socket. And a little bit later on, I'm going to try in one of the coaches a Trainomatic Next18 decoder. You can buy function only decoders from Trainomatic, and they do represent a cost saving. Um, but this is just what I happen to have in stock. So we see how well that works. And we'll come to that later on in the video. So I've got them all out of the boxes and I'll just lay them out there. So instant train and one of the things which uh, you do get all of the six wheelers come with those spare footboards to remove that gap. Um, although actually I don't think it's that noticeable. So really it's, it's there if, if that gap bothers you and all it will do is just restrict the sideways movement of that center axle. Looking underneath, um, I always do look underneath because I quite like all this complex brake rigging um, that's been fitted. One of the things I have noticed is that these just sort of flail loose. They, um, they do sort of sit in the right place. And uh, that one points at a slightly strange angle. From the side, you're not really gonna see that. It's not an issue. So, um, it works and it does mean I guess that these are a lot easier to assemble. I really like the finesse on that uh, vacuum brake cylinder and then we've got the couplings are uh, in a um, it's kind of a, a rotating but self-centering NEM pocket so it's not those kinematics that we see on bogey coaches. So that's good actually, because what it does mean is that these aren't gonna have a propensity to stick to one side if you have quite a long rake of these. Anybody who's run those uh, Mark 1s or other such coaches with the kinematics will know exactly what I mean. Once you go over a certain weight, they tend to pull to the side. Now, looking in there, there is a full interior and that's something where I think the lighting is really going to come into its own. One of the things I do want to put to the test is what the lighting actually does if there's no decoder in there. I'm assuming that there is a blanking plate and I'm just wondering if they come on all the time. These particular coaches come with the gas lighting. Now, one of the things that I can see there is just you see at the end, 
some of these pots on the roof don't appear to be quite flush. That second one is. That one's slightly at an angle. Again, slight angle. And then that one's flush. So it's not a big deal, but um, I can see that some of those really quite nice pots don't seem to be quite seated right. And I'm just going to apply a small amount of pressure. I think it's glued in, which means that it's not going to just push and click into place. Uh, but again, as I always say, bear in mind that's under very, very close magnification. The pipework along the roof, too, is separately applied. And I again, I really like it. There's some really nice detail on there. Plus these roof ventilators. Now, white is quite a cruel colour. It does show up even the most minor of imperfections. So any areas where you're seeing these not quite seated home, that is emphasised by the white roof. Um, but believe me, actually, from most viewing angles, you're really not going to notice. It's not really a big deal. The livery application on the side, though, is absolutely exquisite. The London and North Western Railway livery really does look all the glory of the Victorian Edwardian period with all of the gilting around the windows there on the beadwork of the frame and the number of different passes that this must have had to go through through the machine really does suggest that we're going to get really good value for money from this. And one of the things to note is we've actually got a second class compartment and first and then we've got another first and then a third. So what's going on here? The underframe detail, again, pretty exquisite. It looks to be a steel underframe on these. The prototype coaches uh, from the period uh, had a mix of either wooden or steel underframes, and these do represent uh, steel underframe versions. We've got uh, vacuum cylinders fixed in place, and this pipework on the end is, again, all separately applied. The paint on the ends does seem to have just accumulated a little bit around these uprights but again this is quite cruel magnification and it's not obvious with the naked eye in fact the naked eye is more drawn to this pipework which really is exquisite the buffers are not sprung but you know my stance on sprung buffers complete waste of time unless you're going to use uh, prototypical three link type couplings and actually tight buffer up your stock which also means that you're going to be running on prototypical curves which actually aren't all that curved in model form certainly not unless you've got about 30 feet are you going to really see much of a bend in your track so that's actually quite a good way of keeping costs down the windows look nice and clear looking on the camera view screen. They really doesn't show up much in the way of distortion and they do look quite clear so we can see through to the interior. The wheel faces again worth a mention. I really like the decoration on those with the wooden inners and the different bands of steel, wood, and the quite thin tyres on the uh, end as well all picked out in the appropriate colours. It's a really, really nice finish. But um, this livery really does look nice and special. Looking to the other coaches, again, we've got a uh, really good livery application. This particular one shows off that cream colour. Plum and Spilt Milk, I believe, was the nickname for the London and North Western Railway colours. And they kind of became... I suppose some of the inspiration for the uh, crimson and cream of the British Rail period. Um, but uh, I think these look so much better and that picking out in the gold really does make these look something special. The writing on the side there, third, the carriage number, ventilators above the doors as well. I like the door surrounds, so we've got this almost salmon pink colour just in there is such a complex livery that has been done so so well really like the crest and um, that'll be the London and North Western Railway crest really does look exquisite now looking to these door handles these are all separately applied 
they're not molded on in fact there's a lot of quite subtle separately applied detail on these doors I also quite like these hinges along the bottom I can't see whether I think they may have been separately applied as well certainly they are perfect because what you see there the body side curves in so for the doors to be able to open properly the hinge actually needs to stick out uh, and this is something that quite often you don't see properly modelled and you end up with a door that actually wouldn't open with the position of the hinges but that has been replicated perfectly and I suppose it goes to show the amount of effort that has gone into researching these types of coaches. I do like the ducats there you can see how they stick out and we've got glazing in them, separate handrails and the finish is just perfect. There's no straying on these lines, they're exactly where they're supposed to be. Again we've got uh, a really nice view through the end of the coach and I think there's uh, a compartment bulkhead in there so that's why you can't see right down and see out of all the windows. So that'll be really nice to take a look at. And at this end, we've got separately applied steps. These are metal. I seem to recall these on the uh, pre-production samples really standing out as being metal uh, because they were unpainted. That top one's a little loose. I'm just going to check it. It doesn't want to come out, but you can feel it moving. The others, it's a little bit of movement, but they are firmly in place but you can see that scale thickness that we get. These aren't clumsy molded on pieces. They really do look the part. We then got these curved hooped handrails and that's what any member of the crew that was climbing up these could hang on to. And as the steps move towards the middle, so this arc of a, a, a handrail moves in that direction as well, giving this very characteristic look of the end of the wagon. The underframe on this though, we've got, uh, this is what I was a little bit worried about. Um, it does flick back into place, but these do seem to be kind of allowed to do their own thing. I'm not convinced it does give the, although well, that looks quite spindly. I'm not sure about those. I, I can't say I'm convinced about these um, pieces. I would have said actually, for me, they would do better sort of tucked in perhaps underneath, I don't know. The wheels are actually very, very free running. Uh, that one's got that rubbing on the back, but let's just check that. That's very, very smooth, isn't it? Really, really free running. We've got the pinpoint bearings into the actual axle boxes. In fact, I didn't show you properly that sliding mechanism on this. Let's go back to that. Or in fact, we'll pick that up with this one and again it's very very free running and what this actually means is that there's no huge unprototypical gap uh, at the end of the axles possibly a little bit more complex than it needs to be but it does actually do the job again livery application on this coach is exquisite we've got separate details again on the ends and the other end we've got just uh, blank and still got separately fitted details. There's a lot of separately fitted details on these. They do reward close scrutiny. Now this one, we do have a bit of a wobbly footboard on there and I'm not sure what's gone on. It does look a little bit like this has been knocked. Um, and I'll just put that down to being a bit of a one-off from the factory perhaps, but um, they are quite bent. Being metal, they are very strong and resilient, but it does mean that they don't want to spring back into place. That distortion looks to be from how they're screwed on, uh, almost like that doesn't quite fit. I'm not sure what's going on there. The rest of the actual livery is really nicely applied. We've got, again, these rather strange brake linkages, uh, purely cosmetic. They kind of stick up in the air and you could imagine those catching on stuff in the point work. I'm not 100% convinced on that. The rest of the livery details, really nice. Those footboards are distorted a little bit on both sides. Not quite so bad on this side, 
Although you can see there's a little bit of a distortion at that end. That's quite bad on that one. Um, a bit of a shame. And they do feel very, very firm. So they are actually bent. I'm not sure what's going on with those. It is a bit of a shame, but the rest of this coach is absolutely exquisite. We're just looking again at those um, pots on the top. We've got that same gap appearing underneath a few of them. That is a bit of a shame. The wobble in this pipe that connects them all, to be honest, um, doesn't really bother me. You could imagine that the pipe on the real ones could well have been a little bit wobbly as well. So that's the London and North Western Railway ones. I'm going to put them to one side and they're going to move on to the LMS ones. Moving over to the LMS coach, we've got uh, a catalogue number on this, H4-6T-501BL. And this is one of the six wheel coaches, again with working lighting. And this for me, when we had the livery samples, was the sleeper hit. Uh, undoubtedly, this was the one which uh, hadn't really got on my radar until I saw the actual coach. And it's just beautiful. And uh, yeah, seeing this now, we've got the production version and I'm not disappointed in the slightest. Again, we've got the replacement full-length sideboards if needed. I'm going to put those to one side. The brake rigging on this is fine. Again, it's same as the other ones, but uh, it's all where it should be. Uh, we've got the sliding central wheel. All feels good and tight. And another look over all of that uh, really quite exquisite brake detail. All factory fitted. There's no parts apart from those footboards if you want to change them for the user to actually uh, fit themselves. Everything comes fitted. The grey is much more forgiving on the roof with these uh, pots along the top. They actually look flushly fitted. I think it's quite possibly a case that um, the grey just actually works better with it. The white ones... I wasn't 100% certain that they were fitted all the way in, but with these, they look fitted right. And even if they are slightly proud, the grey doesn't really show that up. With these black stripes on the edge up to the rain strips, it really is quite an imposing livery. Uh, with this LMS, we've got the drop shadowing on the uh, lettering and the numbers there. This is a full third coach. Uh, I do like the printing on the windows as well. That says non-smoking. But these are really the coaches that we really, really have needed. There's been a real lack of uh, decent LMS coaching stock. We're getting the locomotives through. And uh, whilst we've had a few bits and pieces uh, more recently come through from manufacturers, finally replacing the old mainline coaches that for decades uh, Backman were still selling, uh, and these really do knock things out of the park. Uh, going with um, any of the Princess Coronation class locomotives, Patriots, uh, the improved precedents from uh, Rails of Sheffield that recently came out. Uh, these are the perfect coach to go with those. And it's probably testament to how good these looked when we looked at the livery samples that these are now, as far as I can tell, completely sold out. Everything else is as per the previous coaches that I showed you. But that livery is exquisite. Again, no expense spared on the number of passes. And it's absolutely straight and true. There's nothing wonky on these whatsoever that I can see. Really, really nice. Now, there's a final coach that I do want to show you. And this is one that came partway through us filming this video. And uh, I have had it on order and it's finally arrived. And this is the six wheel generator coach in BR blue and grey. And this originally, the prototype was a Great Eastern Railway coach. And it's believed to be the oldest coach that ever got a blue grey livery. 
And whilst Hattons were researching the, um, the different liveries, some pictures came to light of this coupled up with a cinema coach and it was just too good an opportunity to miss and they've managed to sneak this out really really well and um, the, there's no change to the tooling one of the things that people have asked about these windows are effectively printed over the top of and for a one-off uh, conversion coach to be honest that's perfectly fine I've seen this as well with uh, I think it's Test Car 2 from uh, Backman which is a Mark II uh, RTC coach that had vents printed over the windows and actually it works reasonably well. Now um, one of the things which I've seen a lot of people asking about online with these is the shade of blue in the photographs looked a little bit on the light side so what I'm going to do is I've actually got a Backman blue and grey coach and just so that we've got all of the different manufacturers uh, I've also got a Hornby blue grey coach. Now um, let's just first of all let's compare Hornby and Backman they look pretty close to each other ignore the roof colour uh, we're just interested in that blue and the grey. Now the grey looks right, the blue um, it's got the right shade, slightly darker. So we're happy that both Hornby and Backman have got that colour um, pretty, pretty well spot on. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare these two to each other. So this is Backman and the Hattons one and the blue is not the same. It's a much more washed out colour and uh, a bit disappointed to see that the grey has an almost bluey tinge to it. Now the best way I can describe this when you compare it like for like is it feels a little bit like the entire coach has been sprayed blue and then the grey has been applied over the top but um, there's still an element of that blue coming through um, and it's something that you sometimes see if you overpaint different colours it does change the colour of the top coat and that's a little bit what it's feeling there for me. It's not massively out and I suspect that um, this is going off the photographs, the colour photographs that have been uh, going around online um, do make it look a little bit faded. Now old colour photograph stock is notorious for not being uh, a verbatim record of the actual colour and um, it, it, it's a well-known thing and what I suspect is that um, the factory's gone off the photograph rather than using that as a guide to say well okay this is in rail blue and grey so why not take the actual Pantone colours and apply them to the coach? My gut feeling is that this is matched to the photograph rather than relying on what blue-grey should actually be. Now they may have some information that says actually it wasn't quite blue-grey um, but my gut feeling is that the shade of blue and grey on this is just a little bit wrong. The roof that's not a problem. The roofs did vary, so um, it looks absolutely fine. But all in all, it's a pretty interesting coach. The real one lasted actually uh, only until 1971. It was broken up at, uh, I think it was Wolverton Works. And given how long it survived, I am actually um, surprised that it didn't get preserved, although I don't know exactly what sort of a condition it was in. The rest of the fittings of this are as per standard, and the sole bars actually look pretty good in that blue. Uh, we've got no problems with bends on the metal running boards. One of the things it does show us is that we do have a number of different underframe details across the range. So you can see there we've got uh, the gas lighting tank, but that's not on the blue grey one instead we've got some of these other cabinets and it's nice to see some actually quite subtle 
differences being catered for across the range. Again, um, wheels too. We've got the same pattern wheels as we saw on the London and North Western Railway ones, but these have got uh, later sort of metal-faced wheels. Uh, they're, they're actually solid metal, and these would be replacement wheels given how long this coach lasted. So all in all, a pretty good fist at that. Now, one of the other things as well that this allows me to show you is the difference between the uh, lit models and the unlit. Uh, this coach, um, I was a bit of a cheapskate, I bought the unlit one. So I'm just going to take the roof off here to show you the DCC fitting. I, I don't like, um, it, it, it takes a lot of effort to get this to come loose. I've just off camera loosened that up. Um, but I'm going to take that out now. And this is the lit version now. It does give me an opportunity to show you the inside. We've got the luggage racks and the seats. There's no real relief detail that I can see on the seats, but certainly um, it does look quite nice. And I think this is where lighting does come into its own. Inside here, we've got um, what are actually spring-loaded plungers for the power pickup. And they go down two uh, we've just got some uh, points down on the chassis and it picks up from the wheels inside here what we're going to need to do we do have a, a capacitor just to uh, stop any flicker but we need to grab a screwdriver and I'm going to fit this with uh, a next 18 decoder from the Trainomatic range and we do recommend the function only decoders that they do just going to grab my remarkably crusty uh, small jeweler screwdriver and uh, I'm just going to undo these screws. The lights, as you can see, are LEDs uh, which sit flush along the top. And one of the benefits um, that there is to having these controlled by a decoder is that you can actually make use of the lighting functions. DCC decoders, uh, you can change whether you're going to have like a bright light, a fluorescent light, flicker effects, all manner of things. And do that final screw. And that is a benefit of you using the decoder. Now, one thing I would say to you is that it can become quite expensive if you're going to fit a decoder into each of your coaches then you're going to end up um, adding quite a lot of extra cost. One of the things that I do want to make clear is that um, if you just put this as is on the track with the blanking plate in, the lights come on and stay on. So you don't need to fit a decoder if you don't want to. That just gives you the control to be able to turn the lights on and off and to also... Uh, be able to use some of the lighting effects, making it look uh, dimmer if you want to. So we've just got the decoder into place there. That decoder is currently set to uh, number three. You can also program it on your programming track. And one of the things I do want to test is what happens if you put these on the programming track. Will it let you program them or not? Or would you have to transfer the decoder into a locomotive to be able to program it. Addresses can be read back and written to the decoder just simply by placing the coach onto your programming track. Uh, just going to fit this in, screw all of this back in. Incidentally, the uh, non-light fitted coaches do not have any of this internal structure that is completely missing and I'm not aware of it being offered as an aftermarket add-on for a user to fit at a later date. So if you do want the lit coaches then you do have to buy them from the outset. Now make sure you get this the right way round. So what you're looking for is the gas lighting pipe going to the same end that you see it there on the body. And then just very carefully fit it back into place and just push 
the roof back down and home. And there you have it. It's as easy as that to uh, fit your decoder into these coaches. Looking on the track here on Weir Yard, I'm going to first of all put one of the lit coaches. This has no decoder in place and you can see that it just lights up the moment it goes on the track. It gives you a really good view of the interior and it goes to show just actually how useful coach lighting is. The coach that I put the decoder into, I'm going to put that now onto the track and you can see it doesn't light up. I've got that on a uh, locomotive address uh, three. So I'm going to select that and then you just turn as if you're turning the headlight on and off. And I do seem to have a few little issues here. I'm pushing down on the coach and I'm going to try F1, F2, F3, F4. I, I'm not getting anything from the coach and uh, what is interesting is that there is a still a lot of flicker from the other coach. This is with no decoder in. I'm going to try that on a different track. Just place that down there and again I'm going to push down and we just get a flicker of light and that's it. All I can say is that the decoder is not happy in this. Uh, I'm going to try the decoder in one of the other coaches and see how that fares. Whilst I've got the top off, just going to show you the inside of the brake end. There isn't actually anything inside the brake end, but the compartments don't go all the way up there. Unfortunately, I've got exactly the same problem with this coach as well. And we just get a flicker and it turns itself off. So I'm not seeming to be able to get the lights to actually work off that decoder. There's no reason why it shouldn't as far as I can tell. Um, it's just for some reason it's not wanting to play ball. We get a flash and it goes straight off again. As you can see with this coach as well, once we put the blanking plate back in the lights come straight on. Um, but it does tend to flicker just a little bit on some of the points. And it is important when you put it on the track just to make sure that that centre wheel set is correctly aligned on the track. When it comes to running, the coaches are very, very sure-footed. And that sliding central axle on the six-wheel coaches does ensure that they are able to negotiate right down to radius one curves quite comfortably and showed no signs of coming off the track, even on undulating track, gradients and complex point work. These just stuck to the track like glue. The lighting was generally pretty reliable, even without the decoder fitted. And my personal preference is actually to leave them with the blanking plug in. That way you get the lighting without having to pay to fit a decoder in every single carriage. And uh, the difficulties that I had in getting a decoder to actually work in them are probably going to be an issue for some others too. When it comes to bleed through, I couldn't detect any on these coaches and they really did work quite well and marked contrast to the problems that I know a lot of modelers had with the ones from another manufacturer, which did seem to somewhat glow when the lights in them were turned on without any modification to uh, make the body sides more opaque. One of the things that I want to compare is the livery application and I've actually got here a Hornby coach in the London and Northwestern Railway livery and I'm going to compare that 
with a similar coach from this Hatton's range. These are the comparisons and you can see there that it does feel like there's actually quite a marked difference in the livery representation on these. Certainly it does look like the Hornby one is going for a slightly different style. There's also less of this gilt edging that you see on the coach at the bottom from Hatton's. And very much when it comes to the roof detail, the Hatton's coach has a lot more refinement to it. It's also something that has to be said that uh, the ends of the coaches too are a lot more refined on the Hatton's model. We also don't get this uh, concave buffer effect too, which uh, is something which did puzzle a number of people on its release. The wheels on both of these do look quite nice. I prefer the darker colour on the Hatton's model, if truth be told, but uh, these are actually quite a good credible fist. The weight difference between the two is quite striking. I can actually feel here that this feels like it's probably a good 25 to 30 percent lighter than the Hatton's model and that probably accounts for a good deal of this coach's ability to stick to the rails. Another area of finesse when we look at those crests they're much much crisper on this bottom model. When it comes to lighting though I did feel that this was a little bit like a solution looking for a problem for me, that DCC decoder in there just seems like an unnecessary extra piece of technology. When actually other manufacturers have managed to use a magnetically operated reed switch to be able to turn coach lighting on or off, either powered by batteries in the case of Hornby or from the track power in the case of Rapido. And I just felt that that was a much simpler solution, which would mean that you didn't need to fit a DCC decoder at a cost of between 14 and 20 pounds per coach. So we turn now to the scores. First up is build quality. And actually I found these a really well put together model. There are a lot of detail parts and these have been handily fitted by the factory. The only area that comes in for criticism from me is that some of these brake pipes just seem a little bit at a loose end. And also on one of the coaches I had running boards which were slightly wibbly wobbly and I'm not quite sure what was going on with that but I have to review things as I find them. Other than that, the build quality was very, very good, and I'm going to give these a 9.6. On running quality, really, there was nothing to fault. They get round even down to radius one curves, and that, for the six-wheel coaches, is a remarkable feat, helped by this innovative sliding middle axle arrangement. They also managed the crests of hills without getting beached on that centre axle and that too was a remarkable feat for a coach that has this long six wheel wheelbase. Overall there just isn't anything to fault so it gets the full 10.0 out of 10. On DCC fitting and innovation I did feel that getting the roof off just was a little bit too difficult. It felt at times almost like I was going to break the coach to get the roof to come free. I know that that's how it's designed but it just didn't feel right to me and I did feel very very nervous taking the roofs off every single time. The other thing too I found was that those screws that held the lighting bar to the roof were very prone to stripping the thread. The DCC fitting itself was straightforward once you got access to that decoder socket, but it did feel like a solution looking for a problem. In my mind, there's better ways to do coach lighting. It's nice that Hattons have tried something different, but I think on this occasion, it didn't really work compared with alternatives such as magnetic reed switches or even batteries and it did add to the cost if you wanted to try and control that lighting on DCC. Although if you place the coach on the track with a blanking plate in it does pleasingly light up and I found that this was still quite reliable when running the trains and for most modelers 
that would be more than acceptable to leave them that way without going to the expense of adding a decoder. So I'm going to give these a 5.9. On accuracy and quality of finish, these were really, really good. The crispness of the printing was exceptional, and you could tell that the demarcation of things like the crests was really, really sharp. And compared with coaches that are being released from other manufacturers, these just felt like they'd gone through that extra layer of delivery application. There was much more fine detail, and things such as these crests really were exquisite. The one area where I did feel that the livery applications fell down was on the blue-grey generator unit. On this coach, I was a little bit puzzled by the fact that the blue and the grey didn't match the blue-grey on the coaches that I have from two other manufacturers in this livery. It felt a little bit like the grey had a bluish tinge to it and the blue itself was a little bit on the light side. And I couldn't help but thinking that maybe Hattons had gone exclusively off the colour as represented in the photographs, rather than thinking that the photographs themselves may not be showing quite a true representation of rail blue and grey. And I do feel that perhaps they should have erred on the side of caution and gone for the standard blue-grey livery. Other than that, though, there really wasn't anything else to fault, and I'm going to give these a 9.5. On value for money, these do score really, really highly. At a price of £36 for the unlit versions and £43 for the ones with lighting, these do offer a remarkably good value coach. And the four packs, too, were even better still, and I'm going to give these a 9.1. And that gives us an overall score of 44.5. These are really great coaches. And I do look forward to the liveries that have been announced for Batch 2 and Batch 3. In fact, I'm pretty excited for the Great Central Railway liveried ones and the Lancashire and Yorkshire ones. But maybe that's just me. Certainly Hattons are catering for a whole host of different railway companies. And finally, we might just be getting some decent rolling stock to go with those pretty pre-grouping locomotives that have been released from a variety of manufacturers for a good number of years now. These are definitely a product worth buying. Well, I hope you really enjoyed today's video and found it informative too. And we've got a link down below to take you to the Hattons website where at the time of filming, they've got uh, a whole host of GWR liveried coaches available to buy. And they've got those at the price of £33 for a single coach and uh, £43 for the lit version of those. And there's a really good range there, more than enough different types for you to be able to make up some really good prototypical lenses trains but stocks are limited so hurry now or you will miss out forever but uh, I'd love to know what you thought about these coaches are these something that you've maybe bought some for your own layout what do you think about them and uh, what are your thoughts on some of the other liveries that I haven't yet looked at here on the channel just wondering what your experiences are Always love to hear from you guys, and it's a great resource in the comments for other modelers too to read up before they buy their own set. But as I said before, stocks are limited, so do hurry. And uh, batch two and batch three should be coming through next year, but they're sure to be just as popular. Don't forget to tickle the like button, share this video to social media, and subscribe to the channel too. And you can also check us out over on Patreon and help support us to keep making the videos that you want to see. Do please check out our full merch store. We've got anything and everything that you could possibly want, from JK logo stickers right through to your Billy's replacement speakers t-shirts. They're all there for you, and we've got our KR Models exclusive Palbrick available to order from Rails of Sheffield. Order from the name you trust, order with confidence, but hurry, because stocks are limited. Until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying, you take great care of yourself. Happy modelling. Bye for now. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCT decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk.
Additional support comes from Rails of Sheffield. Sell to the name you know and trust. Family-run business purchasing collections for over 50 years. From single items to lifetime collections. No collection is too small or too big. Buy, sell or exchange. Any age or any gauge. Rails will take everything locos, coaches, wagons, track work, controllers, accessories. In fact, they will take absolutely everything and certainly will not cherry pick the best items. Rails are only a phone call away. Call them now for the very best price and get instant cash payment or same day transfer. Check them out today at the link below. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 Class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Papair, Karen Nicholl, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, and Jennifer Horton. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.